Will this 2023 event trigger the tribulation? In these past few months leading up to this end time significant event, prophetic precursors have already happened, including a secret meeting, and the implications are biblical. Many of you know that in 2022, over 1,000 worldwide religious leaders met on Mount Sinai for the 10 climate commandments. But few people realized there was a secret meeting that took place the night before. But more on that in a moment and information about a global peace covenant that most people have not heard about. What you may not know is that seven years before the Mount Sinai gathering on June 17th, 2015, Pope Francis first announced the Climate 10 Commandments, calling for a change in our lifestyles, and as he said, to stop the disturbing warming of our planet. Now remember, this is a religious leader pushing climate control. Why is that date, June 17th, 2015, significant? because it fell on the fourth Hebraic month, the time when Moses broke the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai, when he saw the Jewish people worshiping the golden calf that they created. So Pope Francis called on the 1.2 billion Catholics to join the fight against climate change. And in his papal letter called On Care for Our Common Home, he said, praise be to you, my Lord, through our sister, Mother Earth, who sustains and governs us. So this Pope, which the Catholic Reporter publication calls the world's pastor, which I believe is the false prophet, is calling for a new 10 commandments. In other words, the false prophet creating a one world religion through climate control. Now, three months later, in September 2015, Pope Francis addressed the UN. Now, it isn't often that the Pope addresses the UN, and he said, greed is destroying our Earth's resources. There's more information regarding the Pope and a one world religion, which I'll get to in a moment, and reveal a key end time player that no one is talking about. Back to the Mount Sinai Ten Commandments event. Why was there a secret meeting the day before the Mount Sinai event? And who else is behind the climate agenda and one world religion? Tim Cohen, author of The Antichrist and a Cup of Tea, explains. The whole modern climate agenda stems from the Rio Earth Summit of the early 1990s. So the Rio Earth Summit led to the Kyoto Protocol in Japan onto which most of the nations signed, in addition to having formerly, previously signed on to the Rare Earth Summit in the early 1990s. The Rare Earth Summit led to the Kyoto Protocol. The Kyoto Protocol led to all of the COP meetings that have occurred to this day. So until you get to COP21, those COP meetings weren't considered to be very successful. But with COP21, COP26, those two, and now COP27, the thing you're asking about, these 10 commandments at Mount Sinai, you know, coming out of COP27, all of that stems from the Rio Earth Summit. The Rio Earth Summit was a success because of Charles. He was personally credited by world leadership, including the president of Brazil, including Al Gore, including all the major stakeholders for the success of the Rio Earth Summit because he organized aboard the Royal Yacht Britannia, the meetings of the stakeholders beforehand where they hashed out the main issues beforehand, before the summit actually took place in a formal public way. And because Charles did that and acted as the mediator, the interlocutor, et cetera, he was personally credited later for the success of that summit. The statue that was given to him, that is the idol that will be placed upon the Temple Mount years from now, or maybe as short as a year and a half from now, whenever it is, you know, at the start of the Great Tribulation, whether we're in the Tribulation Week or not yet, I'm not saying whether we are yet, whenever it's placed there, and that will be at the start of the Great Tribulation, that statue was given to Charles. It was commissioned by a president of Central Brazil, the, the president of Tokentons, right, to hail Charles. With his face. <laughs> with his face, you know, mm -hmm. overspread, outspread wings, wearing only a loincloth, standing atop a mass of human bodies looking up to him as a godlike figure as a savior and in fact the statue actually has on the inscription on its base inscribed savior of the world and they're looking up to charles as the environmental savior of the world so it ties directly to all this cop stuff this climate stuff right 
Why do I bring all that up? Charles acted beforehand to ensure the success of the Rio Earth Summit and then was credited by the world for the success of that, right? So now you had uh, COP27, Charles chose not to attend that one. He was involved in most of the prior ones, but he chose not to attend this one. He did something different this time. November 4th, he held a meeting in London where all the key stakeholders, nations and individuals for COP27 came before him mm. and he addressed things beforehand, just like he'd done for the Rio Earth Summit previously. <laughs> all so this stuff, including these, these 10 commandments, which the Pope is also on board with, right? And we'll come to him in a moment. All this stuff is being orchestrated under Charles, including these 10 commandments, these climate 10 commandments for COP27. Wow. November 4th, look it up. Oh my goodness, yeah. Okay, here we go he again. Had, he Behind the meeting. scenes, and people didn't know about it, really. Most well, people didn't. It, it wasn't highly publicized, but some people knew about it. It was, you know, publicized. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But look this up, Charles held a meeting, 200 plus attendees, I think it was. Nations and individuals, the major stakeholders, in this case for COP27, because Charles wasn't going to go to that now that he's king, in person. He's trusting his lower level people, in other words, to handle it. But he's giving them direction beforehand to make sure it goes how he wants. And that's what it was. And now you've got the Pope coming in, kind of from the side, almost as a partner, but without saying he's a partner, to promote these, these uh, climate Ten Commandments, right? Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the COVID-19 pandemic has shown us just how devastating a global cross-border threat can be. Climate change and biodiversity loss are no different. In fact, they pose an even greater existential threat to the extent that we have to put ourselves on what might be called a warlike footing. I'll be getting back to King Charles in a moment and the 2023 prophetic event. There's even more regarding the Pope and a one world religion that most people have not heard about. Now, Pope Francis was elected Pope in 2013 and he wasted no time for his one world religion climate change agenda. In 2013, the Pope urged all religions and those belonging to no church to unite to defend peace and the environment. The Pope is not only involved in the Climate Ten Commandments, but the Abrahamic Family Headquarters, also known as the One World Religion Headquarters that opened up this year in Abu Dhabi. The headquarters has been built in collaboration with Pope Francis and the highest Imam Ahmed al Tayyib after they both signed a global peace covenant on February 4th, 2019, called the Document of Human Fraternity for World Peace. The Abrahamic Family Headquarters, according to their website, has said that this headquarters is just their first initiative. What more do they have in mind? Maybe the Antichrist One World Religious Temple in Jerusalem? This is the Abrahamic Family House inauguration ceremony, portraying a one world religion in a positive, hypnotic way. Of course, using children as their visuals. We know the world elites want a one world religion so the world would worship the Antichrist. By the way, Pope Francis is not only uniting religions, but assures atheists, you don't have to believe in God to go to heaven. Now we see how King Charles has been over the climate agenda, the Mount Sinai 10 climate commandments, and how he's using the Pope to facilitate a one world religion and climate change. But how will this upcoming 2023 event propel the one world religion and possibly trigger the tribulation? On May 6, 2023, King Charles will be coronated king. The coronation will be presided over by Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby. What are the biblical prophetic implications of this event and how will this affect the world? Well, King Charles is the first king or queen since the 1500s to change a promise that has been upheld by the Church of England. All past monarchs have been deemed defender of the faith, the Christian Protestant faith. But King Charles has said he prefers to be defender of faith, meaning all faiths. 
More people who serve King Charles are uniting religions for an end time, one world religion. More on the coronation and the implications in a moment. Keep your eyes out for the Archbishop of Canterbury. He is a key end time player regarding the one world religion, combining that with climate change. In 2017, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, who serves the monarchy, had a service to present a joint declaration described as a sign of healing after 500 years of division to unite the churches. It was signed by the Roman Catholic Church and global Protestants. Welby called the Reformation a dark period in the church. He is not only pushing to unite the faiths, but pushing climate change as the mechanism. September 2021, the Associated Press reported, the world's top Christian leaders, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Pope Francis, and the spiritual leader of Orthodox Christians issued a joint appeal for delegates at the upcoming UN Climate Summit to listen to the cry of the earth and make sacrifices to save the planet. Now, February 2022, the Archbishop addressed King Charles and he said, climate change has become our greatest threat of our times. And at home, the Church of England maintains an ambitious but necessary net zero carbon by 2030 as its objective. Churches care for the natural environment and their local communities. Christians are working together to protect the planet. See how cl the climate agenda is uh, forming a one world religion. Now he is one of King Charles' puppets for the one world religion. Even as far back as 2006, King Charles made known that he wanted a multi-faith coronation, unlike all the other monarchies of the past. In a recent Reader's Digest article, he said he may stick to the traditional wording when he's crowned, but that won't stop him from promoting interfaith dialogue. He also said the future surely lies in rediscovering the universal truths that dwell at the heart of these religions. How will they unite the religions? In King Charles' 2010 book, Harmony, it shows how he's combining the climate issue with religion. Charles issued a call for a sustainability revolution to reverse environmental threats to the planet, which he blamed in part on the spiritual dimension to our existence being dangerously neglected during the modern era. In other words, religions need to help our climate, the earth. According to the Daily Mail, once King Charles is coronated, one change in the monarchy will be King Charles addressing climate change. King Charles will be leveraging his position. According to Vox, Charles will be using the monarchy's soft power and global connections to advocate for sustainability. What other changes that can we expect from the monarchy that will propel the tribulation? Will this monarchy have more power globally than ever before? Watch this short excerpt on how King Charles III is expected to change the monarchy. In the coming years, the king is expected to actively address climate change, according to the Daily Mail. He does have very clear feelings, particularly about things like the environment, uh, for example, um, about architecture, etc. In 2021, he spoke at the COP26 Climate Summit in Glasgow, imploring world leaders to find practical ways of overcoming differences in order to, quote, rescue this precious planet. King Charles has even commented on his history of environmental activism in a 2021 TV interview. He said, Why do you think I think I've done all this for all these years because I'm minded about, and always have done, the next generation. According to Vox, Charles will use the monarchy's soft power and global connections to advocate for sustainability. As explained by historian Ed Owens, he's very much trying to create a new global platform for the British monarchy. In reading the news from the UK and tweets from the UK, people are fearful that King Charles is on the side of the World Economic Forum and not on the side of the people. The monarchy is supposed to be politically neutral, which King Charles is not. Nigel Farage said he promised us as king he would not get involved in politics. This is a huge change for the monarchy. Now remember, King Charles started the Great Reset, which is really a one world religion centered around the environment, where we own nothing and we're supposed to be happy. Now that King Charles is king, how much wealth is at his disposal? 
Tim Cohen explains. He now has the wealth of the crown at his disposal. In other words, it's directly at his disposal. When we read in various articles and magazines, you know, where people are speculating or trying to calculate what the wealth is of the crown, or now under Charles, or now the wealth supposedly of Charles as king. In the past, they would have said of the queen, it was about 11 billion, roughly. Uh, and, and then uh, they ratcheted that up to 20 some billion, and now more recently, 40 to 50 billion in that range. That's what you'll read publicly as the wealth of the crown. That's actually not correct. All the nations of the British Commonwealth, specifically the subset of them, that recognize the British monarchy as their monarchy, technically in those nations, the monarchy actually owns all of the land. All that land is leased technically to the peoples of those nations. So in other words, all of Canada's land and resources, natural resources, all of Australia's, all of New Zealand's, et cetera, actually belongs to the crown. Cool. And if you look at it from that perspective, and we're talking a sixth of the world's surface, roughly. I don't know exactly what it is off the top of my head. I have a more precise thing in the chapter, but, and there's actually a book someone wrote on this topic. I referenced it in that chapter, wrote a long time ago, who knows nothing at all about Charles being the Antichrist or anything like that, just about the real wealth of the crown. But it's actually in the tens of trillions with a T. I'm simply saying technically, he's a multi-trillionaire right now by virtue of the crown, which means if you combine the wealth of every other wealthy person on the planet, all of them combined, all of them. Even then, the crown is exponentially, in other words, multiple times, maybe not exponentially, that might be an exaggeration, but several times wealthier than they all are combined. So we see that King Charles is gonna push even harder the Great Reset, climate change, and a one world religion, which is described in the tribulation in the book of Revelation. The one world religion is nothing new. The Tower of Babel and a one world religious system are the same. The intent was and is to unite language and mindset so the Antichrist could use the false prophet as a vehicle for the one world religion. Genesis 11, one through four says, now the whole earth had one language and one speech. Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens, the Tower of Babel. July 2022, a few months before King Charles became king, he opened up the Commonwealth Games in England. The elites always let you know their intentions through movies, through shows. I don't think it's by chance that this show portrayed the rebuilding of the Tower of Babel, the one world religion and worship of the bull and slavery. Watch the footage from the Commonwealth Games. Uh, at this event, Prince Charles opened it in lieu of the queen on her behalf. He oversaw the whole thing. He was there in person at the Alexander Stadium in Birmingham, Birmingham, England, okay? At that event, a giant Molech bull, 10 meters in height, was rolled out into the center of the stadium to be worshiped and to face a large recreated, rebuilt right there in front of everybody, mock Tower of Babel. The one world religion takes place during the seven year tribulation. Revelation 13, written 2000 years ago, talks about the one world religion as the world worships the beast. The book of Daniel and Revelation shows the consequences is death if people do not worship the beast. And the false prophet forces the world to worship the beast. Matthew 24, five and 11, speaking of the last days and false religions says, for many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. For more information regarding how much power King Charles really has politically and globally, click the video on the screen and I'll see you there.